Welcome back to the Make or Break Shop. This week we're taking a look at a K40 laser, probably the most popular CO2 laser because of the price. So we're gonna break this one down and see if this could be a good fit for you guys in your shop. I am Brandon, welcome back to the shop, and we have another laser review for you. We've done a ton of these here recently. You can check out some of the smaller diode lasers we've done right up there. But this week we're looking at this 40 watt laser, affectionately known as a K40. If you've been in kind of the CO2 laser world, more than likely you've run across one of these. These are basically the beginner unit if you guys are looking to get into CO2 because of their price point. Specifically, this one is from Ohm Tech, but they're actually a US side supplier of Orion and Motor Tech, which I got my 50 watt laser. You can see the review of right up there. But what's great about what they're doing is they are importing from China, they're doing some quality control and then they're sending it back out. So this could be a really good option if you're wanting to get into a machine like this. So timestamps down below to everything that we're going to talk about. So first let's hit the features and then we'll go pros and cons and then we'll talk about how this could fit into your shop, especially compared to some of the other units that are out there. So the biggest thing is this is a CO2 laser, specifically this is 40 watts. And usually with machines like this, your actual wattage are gonna be a little bit lower than what they say. But if you're only used to a diode laser, this is going to be the biggest difference of everything else that we're gonna talk about. The fact that you can actually cut material really well versus a diode laser where you're only gonna be able to cut paper and maybe super, super, super thin wood. We're not gonna get into like a full materials test. I've actually done some of those in the past with a 50 watt laser. Laser. But on the engraving side of things, everything from wood, acrylic, glass, leather, and even metal, if the metal is coated, so it's powder coated, or if there's some type of spray on top of it, then you're gonna be able to engrave. And then on the cutting side of things, you're looking at leather, wood, acrylic, and then anything thinner than that. It's got an eight by 12 work bed. So if you're doing like bigger cutting boards, you're not gonna be able to do that with this style machine. But if you're doing smaller stuff, like as we're going into Christmas ornaments or coasters, then this could be a perfect setup for you. In addition to the laser, it actually has a red laser pointer and you can just use that to help line up where you're gonna cut something out. So in the software, which is K40 Whisper, you're able to run uh, a, basically a trace around everything you're going to engrave. So it really helps you line up because unlike the more expensive units where you can have cameras that help you do that, you're gonna kind of have to manually adjust things. Uh, but using that red laser is gonna help you do that. There's also a way that you can actually trace it with the laser itself, but then you're actually marking your material. So having a uh, kind of a laser pointer is great. Now, another big benefit on something like this versus a diode laser is just speed. And speed in terms of cutting, obviously, um, diodes really hard, but also raster engraving. This thing, they say can run about 300 to 400 millimeters per second. I tested it up to about 200 and it did pretty well. There's always a balance between uh, power of your laser, uh, the speed of the laser, and then the kind of the quality of the cut. So you might get a little bit of slipping if it's running super, super fast. But being able to go up to 400 millimeters per second Second, that's really quick. On the cutting side of things, they say you can get it up to about 25 millimeters per second, which actually is pretty quick if you're just cutting out pretty simple shapes. So one thing I didn't realize the very first time that I got a laser is this isn't all that you gotta worry about. You're gonna have to worry about cooling and then you're gonna have to worry about exhaust because obviously you're gonna be burning stuff with a laser. Either those fumes are just gonna be no fun like with wood or they're gonna be toxic if you start doing stuff with acrylic or plastics. It's got an exhaust fan on the back and provide you some tubing. In my case, I just vent that out our garage door or out of a window. And then in terms of cooling, so the laser tube is in the back and as the laser is firing, it's gonna heat up and you're gonna need a way to cool that. And that is with water. And with these, it is a really easy solution. It's literally an aquarium pump that you just put in a plastic bucket. You're gonna need to use distilled water. My setup for this isn't that great. You want a sealed bucket because you don't want any uh, contaminants getting into the water, which would eventually get onto the glass tube and potentially break it. Now, Omtech also sells chillers and those are really popular. So that not only are they water reservoirs, but they also keep the water temperature down. So now we've got the K40 set up. It's time to turn to the software. K40 Whisper. K40 Whisper isn't my favorite. Lightburn is still my favorite software to use, but with these 40 watt CO2 units, you actually have to upgrade the board to be able to use something like Lightburn. And probably the biggest difference is uh, when we are changing up the power, we have to do it right here. So that's nine, 10, um, that changes the power settings. But with an upgraded board and light burn, you can actually change the power in software. We're gonna do a test cut. So we're gonna jump into the K40 Whisperer right now. And you can see here is the software. Um, it's pretty simple. I usually have it set up uh, to millimeters. And then all you do is you're gonna initialize the laser and then we are going to open up a design. 
And then you can bring in a G code, a DXF, an SVG, and then I'm gonna be going with this engraved small file. All right, and now you can see it right there. That is our actual file. We need to come up here to settings, uh, to raster setting. And then I need to make sure I have that half tone dither turned on. If it's turned off, you can see all of this is now black and white. I know it's kind of hard to see, but if I turn the raster back on, uh, and I'm not gonna adjust these yet. We're gonna kind of see how it goes. You can see now we have that grayscale. And then the laser head is gonna move to the right points. Uh, let's see, we're gonna take it. And then what's also nice is you can do a control T and that's going to do a trace. So I'm going to do uh, trace the boundary. So now we are set up. Um, we're going to run this at 100, and then I'm going to do it at a power of 10. So let's go ahead and hit raster engrave. Okay, then you can see this did a pretty good job. This is fairly small, so I mean, that's my finger. And we did get some scoring, and it actually looked like it was going in pretty deep. So I probably could bring that power back a good bit. Uh, a big thing with a lot of these units is there's gonna be a lot of kind of trial and error to figure out what your real settings are gonna be. So you can see for raster engraving and even cuts with this really thin basswood, um, this does a really good job. As always with these machines, you're gonna have to balance your speed and your power. So especially doing those raster engraves, you can double the speed, but then you probably need to increase the power. But eventually either you're gonna be running it too strong and you're gonna get charring, or you're gonna be running it too fast and then the physical limitations of the belts and stuff are gonna to start to slip. I have seen where people will run this um, up to like 500 millimeters per second. That second test was 200. So let's actually try to do a bigger raster engrave now. And I think with all of my lasers, that is always a picture of baby Yoda. First, I'm gonna grab a picture. Let's grab this one from Google Images. It's 1136 by 852. Now for K40 Whisper, if I tried to bring this in directly, you can see that a JPEG is not one of the options. So I'm gonna need to bring that into Inkscape first. So I usually use Adobe Illustrator, but in this case, I use Inkscape because it's free on Mac or PC. So um, you guys should be able to use either one. So in this case, I'm going to open it up and I'm going to scale this down a good bit. Cool. All right, so this is pretty small. So with that, let's go ahead and get the laser set up and we'll be good to go. So this is finished up. So basswood, I'm gonna say, probably doesn't engrave the best. Actually, I went ahead and ran another test. And this is on Baltic birch plywood. And you can see it looks a good bit better. But what's cool about CO2s versus even diodes, you can see there's definitely depth. And so something like that, you're not gonna get with the diode laser. Uh, and that's the CO2s in general, but you can get a really good result. This was at 1000 DPI and overall this looks uh, really good. So we're gonna do a few more tests to give you kind of an idea of a little bit more of what this guy can do. All right, so this is gonna be my first attempt at a vector cut. This is actually something that's already cut on another laser, but I'm just gonna use this, this five millimeter plywood and I'm gonna run this at 20% power, 10 millimeters per second to see how it goes. All right, so we're definitely getting some burning. It's one of the things with the units like these is you don't have any air assist, so there's nothing putting that flame out. So let me actually run it faster, but I'm gonna do multiple passes. Also, if I close this lid, um, that's gonna help just with the exhaust. So now I'm gonna go double the speed, but still at 20% on the power. And I'm sure that didn't make it all the way through. Yeah, so, all right, so let's do one more, but this time we're gonna do um, two different cuts and see if we'll get all the way through. All right, so that definitely got it through, but you could see we're definitely getting some flames as a result. Clean cut, um, we got the good dark marks all across the edge. 
And probably the biggest factor you're either watching this video or you're looking at one of these machines is the price point. These can kind of range. Uh, usually it's between three to 500. In this case, I believe this one is like 420. And they also have a, uh, a little bit smaller one that's 380, still the same wattage. You can get into CO2 lasers for under 500 bucks. Now I've kind of compared and contrasted a bunch of different lasers. You can check it out up there. And always my hesitation with a unit like this, especially those K40s, is you just didn't know what you were gonna get once you imported them from China. I personally bought a 50 watt unit from China. I've had it for several years. The thing is a beast. It does a great job. And I've been happy to find this one is the same. Uh, there was no cracked tube. There were no dents. Nothing was damaged. And I could get this thing working pretty much right out of the box. Really the only thing that I have found so far is I just need to align the red laser dot. It's a little bit off from where it's actually cutting, but that's super easy. Now, full disclosure, Omtech did send this to me to review. And if you go through my link, that is an affiliate at link. But if I was to buy a K40, and if I was just gonna recommend this to anyone, and you don't have to use my link, I don't I don't care. I would recommend going through them just because they're on the US side of things. So you don't have to worry about some of like the shipping hassles of things coming from overseas. And there's someone you can call if you need to and you're having problems. All right, pros and cons real quick. On the pro side of thing, again, it is the price. This is the cheapest you can get into a CO2 laser. So this is a all metal construction. Um, this top piece is acrylic, uh, so it's not glass like some of the more expensive units. But everything about this has been great as I've gone through it. Nothing has been broken and nothing has been dented like I mentioned earlier. And so it is solid. It doesn't feel like it's gonna break and there's nothing plastic on it, which is super nice. Also, this unit has an emergency stop. So if things are starting to go crazy, you can stop this unit really, really quick uh, because you don't want fires to start and all that. Kind of stuff. And then the biggest pro with this unit when you're buying it from Omtech is it's gonna come with a warranty. So you're gonna have a two year warranty with the machine itself, uh, and then it's a year on the consumables, the power supply, and the laser tube. Eventually, the laser tube is gonna run out of juice and you're gonna have to buy a new one, but it's great that you at least have a year warranty to get a lot of good use out of it. Again, my 50 watt, that thing is like two and a half years old, tube's still running strong. So if you're using it in a more hobbyist setting, you're not running it multiple hours a day, and this thing is gonna last you a really long time. All right, so let's get into cons. So these cons really aren't on the own tech side of things. Again, the quality control, making sure nothing's broken, the warranty, that's all great stuff. Really the cons on this unit are gonna be about the actual like K40 itself. So any K40 you get, you're gonna run into these issues. And a lot of these led me to buy a little bit more expensive, uh, the bigger unit, the 50 watt. But my use case might be a little bit different than yours. And this still might be a good solution for you. So probably the biggest thing for me looking at it is just the bed size. I always needed something that was bigger than eight by 12 inches. And so going with a bigger unit, I'm able to get a lot bigger pieces in it. The bigger units also have a pass through, so you can have something going into the edge of it. And then the bed is actually adjustable. So this one is not. And so if you need to focus the laser, um, you actually are gonna have to move your material. So you're gonna have to put spacers underneath. And then the bed itself, one of the easy adjustments a lot of people make is a honeycomb. And what that does, it allows ventilation underneath. This one has slots, but if you're doing a lot of cutting, um, having honeycomb underneath really helps cycle that air out and get it out of the machine. So you're not gonna burn anything and you're not gonna have smoke buildup. And probably that's the biggest con with the K40 in general is just how it deals with high power. The biggest thing about this is there's no air assist, meaning on a lot of other lasers, as the laser head is going, um, you're gonna have basically a tube of compressed air shooting and putting out any flames as it goes. You could see in our tests when we were running this a little bit hotter that we were getting um, flame up, still gonna get like the soot and it's just not gonna be great for the cut. Now, a lot of these cons that I'm gonna talk about are also one of the reasons people like to get a K40 because there's a ton of modifications and a lot of people that have done those modifications out there. I'm actually planning on doing some of those myself. So kind of show you how you can upgrade a machine like that. And probably air assist is going to be the biggest upgrade that you would wanna make. So if you are looking at this machine and you mainly want to engrave and do a little bit of cutting, this still could be a really good option for you right out of the box. But just know if you're gonna be doing a lot of cutting you really are gonna to have to be watching on the fire, the flame side of things. You need to be pretty careful with it. So really the last con for this unit all kind of goes into the same area and that is the board that runs it. So the software that comes with it is called K40 Whisperer. It's great, but it is just gonna be used to send the actual commands to the laser. So 
My favorite piece of software is actually Lightburn, which is super compatible with other units that Omtech sells like the 50 watt or even bigger. And from there, you can actually set the power within the software and then you can do multiple cuts or you can send different commands. But for this guy, you actually set the power right on top and they just have it as a percentage of the power. Another upgrade a lot of people do is they'll add a meter that actually shows you the amount of wattages that are going through that. And that is probably the best way to tell um, the power that your laser is running at. Again, this is something that is fairly easy to upgrade. There is a couple boards out there. Cohesion 3D is a super popular one that people will combine with a K40 and then you can use Lightburn with it. But again, you can still use this unit and it still works great. Just know you're gonna need to create your graphics either in a free piece of software like Inkscape or using Illustrator and then bring it into K40 Whisper and then send it to the unit. Where in Lightburn, you can design and send all of that in one spot. All right, so who does this machine make sense for? If you are looking to do small scale stuff on the hobbyist side of things, this is a great entry point. This is gonna be double the cost of kind of my favorite diode laser, the Otour laser, review right up there. So you're gonna go from 200 to 400, but with that, you're getting a CO2 laser, which can actually cut and do a lot more. Now, if you need to do bigger stuff, or if you wanna have all of the air assist, being able to use light burn, if you want all of that right out of the box, um, you'll want to look at the 50 watt unit, which is about $1,000 more. But unlike what I've seen from a lot of other folks that get the K40 and they import it directly from China, um, this thing worked directly out of the box. I was able to make designs, um, use K40 Whisper and send it right to it. And I was cutting in just like under an hour. So what other questions do you have about the K40? Uh, drop them in the comments below and then be sure and check the comments to see if your question has already been answered. I'm planning on doing some upgrades to this machine so you can see what that process would look like. But again, because this is a US company that has a one to two year warranty, depending on the parts that you're talking about and they have customer support that you can actually call, I think that is a great upgrade to where the K40 landscape looked like before Ohmtech started selling them. So until next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys.